Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. The topic of today's lecture is Merkel cell carcinoma. Introduction. Merkel cell carcinoma is a highly aggressive neuroendocrine skin cancer that is characterized by early and frequent metastasis and a five-year disease-associated mortality rate is that is very high and is 40%. The predisposing factor to this tumor are immunosuppression, sun exposure, and advanced age. Most Merkel cell carcinoma are characterized by a clonal integration of Merkel cell polio uh, polyoma virus into the host genome that stimulate the tumor cell growth. Merkel cell carcinoma is a rare cancer, but its incidence is constantly on a rise. Management of the primary tumor stage include wide local excision, sentinel lymph node biopsy, and adjuvant radiotherapy. Epidemiology. The age-related annual incidence of Merkel cell carcinoma is 0 0.18 to 0 0.41 per 100,000 person in USA and Europe and around 1 per 100,000 persons in Australia. This increase in incidence may be caused by extrinsic factors like advanced aging of the population in these countries, increase in sun exposure, and the Caucasian race, and improvement in the diagnostic and immunohistochemical tools. Merkel cell carcinoma are most often found on sun-exposed areas of the Caucasian skin who are older than 50 years of age. The mean age at the time of diagnosis is around 76 years in women and around 73 years in men. Merkel cell carcinoma occur much more frequently in severe immunosuppressed population. For example, those having an organ transplant and patients with the hematolymphoid disorders or patients suffering from acquired immunodeficiency, AIDS. Patients diagnosed with Merkel cell carcinoma bear an increased risk for being diagnosed with a secondary primary cancer when compared with the general population. So these Secondary primary cancers include BCC, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, and probably other kind of malignancies. Pathophysiology. The Merkel cells were considered to be the cell of origin of Merkel cell carcinoma. These cells are located at the epidermal dermal junction and are supposed to function as the nociceptive receptors of the skin. The presence of Merkel cell polyoma virus in about 80% of Merkel cell carcinoma patient has been confirmed by several studies. This is in fact the first polyoma virus that is directly linked to the uh, cancer pathogenesis. An alternate proposal suggests that pluripotent stem cells in epidermis or dermis are cell of origin of Merkel cell carcinoma. Very recently, it is suggested that Merkel cell carcinoma derives from the pre or pro B cells based on early B cell antigen express expression in Merkel cell carcinoma. So among the different theories, the first is the origin from the Merkel cells, which are the nociceptive cells in the skin. The second theory is the, um, is the 
presence of the polyoma virus. Third theory is they originate from a pluripotent stem cells located in the epidermis or the dermis. And the last theory is that it originates from pre or pro B cells. Further investigations are required because it is expected that knowledge of cell ancestry of Merkel cell carcinoma will have its impact on the management strategies of these patients. Then the predisposing factors, including the environmental factors. As mentioned before, ultraviolet light is a major contributing factor and effects directly or indirectly in causing Merkel cell carcinoma. It is generally accepted that now, the UV exposure leads to down regulation of immune response and uh, the tumor occurs much more frequently in severely immunosuppressed population, especially patients on organ transplant. The prognosis of MCC in immunosuppressed patient is much poorer as compared to that in immunocompetent individuals. The mean age of patients at the time of diagnosis is around 70 years. There is 5 to 10 fold increase in incidence of the tumor after 65 years. And it is likely that this age related impairment of immune functions and the cumulative dose of ultraviolet radiation contribute to this rise in elder population. Pathology. Based on histopathology, three different types of Merkel cell carcinoma are identified. The trabecular type, the intermediate type, and the small cell type. The most frequent of Merkel cell carcinoma, that is more than 95%, are the intermediate type, which is mistaken for the hematological malignancies. The small cell type of Merkel cell carcinoma is far less common, that is 5%, and histologically, it is indistinguishable from the metastasis uh, from the small, lung can small cell lung cancer. The Merkel cell carcinoma tend to occur in the mid-dermis and reveal either solid, sheet-like, or nodular growth pattern or diffuse growth pattern. Mitosis and apoptotic bodies are frequently seen. Most Merkel cell carcinoma reveal lympho, uh, lymphatic and vascular invasion at the time of histopathological diagnosis. This is the low power view of Merkel cell carcinoma showing small blue cell tumor extending deep into the subcutaneous fat. There is extensive intraepidermal spread as well. Then the field show characteristic nuclear molding. This is the intermediate variant comprising of large pale staining cells containing small tiny nuclei. This watery appearance of the cells is pathognomic. Then this is a small cell variant and it is indistinguishable from the metastatic neuroendocrine carcinoma. The slide shows the lymphatic invasion of uh, the tumor. Now the immunohistochemistry. Merkel cell carcinoma are very P4 positive. This uh, stain is also positive in DCC. So in this way, it is uh, difficult to identify or differentiate from BCC because BCC also comprises of the basaloid cells. But there is no peripheral palisading or retraction artifact in Merkel cell carcinomas. It is EMA positive as well. So EMA is present usually in squamous cell carcinoma and negative in BCCs. So if both these two stains are positive, then the histopathological diagnosis is towards Merkel cell carcinoma. CAM 5.2 shows dot-like positivity. Then it is CK20 positive and CK7 negative. 
CD56 is also positive in Merkel cell carcinoma and chromogranin is uh, partially positive. TTF1 is negative. So on the basis, Bari P4 and EMA positive, CK7 weak, CAM 5.2 and CK20 show dot-like accentuation and TTF1 is negative, we reach to the diagnosis of Merkel cell carcinoma. The clinical features. Merkel cell carcinoma is a fast-growing, asymptomatic, solitary firm, non-sensitive, flesh to red or violaceous nodule with smooth, shiny surface. MCC characteristically develop and grow rapidly over weeks to months on chronically sun-damaged skin. Thus, the predominant site are the head and neck, more than half of the cases, and extremities in one-third of the cases, where his trunk as well as oral and genital mucosa are involved in less than 10% of the cases. Beside the most frequent nodular type, plaque-like variants are also present. Ulceration in Merkel cell carcinoma um, is rarely observed, mostly in advanced tumors. And in contrast, satellite metastases are frequently observed. So this is how the Merkel cell tumor present as a solitary nodule maybe on thigh or maybe on sun-exposed areas, but rarely on other non-sun-exposed sites. The tumor often exhibits telangiectasias, mimicking it more with basal cell carcinoma. The clinical presentation is also confused with number of benign conditions like a cyst or acneform lesion a lipoma, a dermatofibroma, or a vascular lesion, or malignant conditions like lymphoma, sarcoma, or cutaneous metastasis. To aid the clinical diagnosis, the acronym of AEIOU is proposed. A stands for asymptomatic, E for expanding rapidly, I for immunosuppressed individuals, O for older patients, and U is ultraviolet exposed sites. In 90% of Merkel cell carcinoma, at least three of the above five factors are present. Then disease course and prognosis. Several favorable prognos prognostic factors uh, that are identified include the primary tumor size of less than or equal to 2 cm, uh, a local disease, a female gender, and primary tumor being localized to the upper limb. And poor prognostic factor include immunosuppression or lymph node status, which is the most important independent predictor, which include the occult microscopic nodal, nodal involvement that is present in one third of the patients. In severe immunosuppressed individuals, Numerous cutaneous metastases are seen. Staging. In 210, the American Joint Committee on Cancer, AJCC, introduced the current staging system of Merkel cell carcinoma. And this staging system determines the uh, primary tumor, regional lymph nodes, and metastases at the time of initial diagnosis. The T category is classified measuring the maximum dimension of the primary tumor. So, stage T1 is 2 cm or less. Stage T2 is 2 cm to 5 cm. Stage 3 is more than 5 cm. And stage 4 is extracutaneous involvement into the bone, muscle and fascia or cartilage. The N category is the nodal category and PN0 is no pathological involvement, N1A represent microscopic and N1B macroscopic lymph node involvement, N2 refers to presence of in transit metastasis, M is the metastatic uh, stage, M1A include distant skin 
subcutaneous tissue or lymph nodes and M1B, lung, M1C, other visceras that include brain metastasis. 1A includes skin and subcutaneous fat and lymph nodes. Stage 1B is uh, the lungs and 1C is other visceras including the brain. Investigations. After confirming the diagnosis of primary Merkel cell carcinoma, imaging may be useful to identify the distant metastasis. It is currently recommended to perform ultrasound of the draining lymph nodes, abdomen as well as chest x-ray. Positron emission tomography or computed tomography PET or CT scan is preferred initial, initial investigation. Due to high frequency, around one-third of the lymph node involvement in Merkel cell carcinoma, sentinel lymph node biopsy should always be performed. The most frequent organs that are involved include the skin, lymphatic system, and liver. However, other organ systems may be potentially affected, including CNS. Management. The general principles of management include um, the mainstay of primary MCC is surgery, mainstay of treatment. Owing to the rarity of Merkel cell carcinoma, there is lack of randomized trial to determine the most appropriate therapy at any stage. Thus, a multidisciplinary approach is always helpful in treatment of Merkel cell carcinoma to optimize the outcomes. The primary tumor and local regional metastasis. For primary tumors, without signs of organ metastasis, complete surgical excision with 1 to 2 cm margin around clinically apparent tumor is considered the basic therapy. There is high rate of local recurrence which are generally due to microsatellite metastasis. Hence, a safety margin of 2 cm is adopted. Due to high frequency of lymphoregional metastasis, sentinel lymph node biopsy is usually performed to help estimate the prognosis. The majority of publications report lymph node involvement even with small tumors. If sentinel lymph node biopsy is positive, a therapeutic lymph adenectomy of the affected region is, uh, is required. Tumors in midline of head and neck region with uninatal lymph node metastasis are associated with high risk of contralateral lymph node progression. Thus, a prophylactic functional contralateral cervical lymph node dissection may also be considered. MCC are usually highly sensitive to radio radiation, ionizing radiation therapy, and the retrospective analysis have shown that high local rates of recurrence after R0 resection of primary tumor can be significantly reduced by combining the local regional adjuvant radiotherapy that irritates the skin surrounding the excision scar with 3 cm safety margin, as well as the next regional lymph node station. Total dose of adjuvant treatment is, 20, is more than 50 grays, with single dose of 2 gray 5 times a week. For prevention of lymph node metastasis, there is still not a sufficient data showing advantages of adjuvant radiotherapy of the lymph node drainage. If complete lymph node dissection is not possible, a total of 55 centigrade, sorry, gray, can achieve good local control. Some advocate the use of radiotherapy for primary tumor stand of surgery instead of surgery. So, uh, no surgery but radiotherapy. Only few role of effect of radiotherapy dose and volume in treatment of MCC either in the adjuvant both primary and nodal or palliative stage for gross primary and nodal disease. The therapeutic usefulness of adjuvant chemotherapy has not yet been demonstrated. However, recommendation is this regard cannot be made here. For distant metastasis, that is stage 4 disease, 
is similar to other neuroendocrine tumors like small cell lung con cancer. This is primarily chemosensitive tumor and has tendency to rapidly develop resistance. Palliative systemic chemotherapy is therefore generally indicated in patients with distant metastasis. Regarding the toxicity of most chemotherapy agents, doses and regimen should be adjusted for elderly patients with limited liver and renal functions as well as hematopoiesis. Anthracyclines, antimetabolites, texanes, bleomycin, cyclophosphamide, etoposide, and platinum derivatives, either as monotherapy or combined use of two or less often, three agents are among the most effective systemic treatment. Long-term healing cannot be achieved in this stage. So this is just a palliative stage. The alternative to combination therapy is sequential monotherapy. The well-tolerated monotherapy options are texanes, etoposides, and anthracyclines. For MCC with distant metastasis, irradiation as a part of Multi-nodal multi treatment approach along with surgical excision and systemic chemotherapy may all be used. Then, experimental treatments. At present, there are only sporadic cases of reports of use of immunotherapies in MCC. There is small case series of usefulness of somatostatin analogs like uh, octirotide and pesirotide either alone or as the radiopeptide therapy. Other experimental therapy treat, uh, targets the aberrant signal transduction in MCC. Follow-up. At present, there is no scientifically validated study on follow-up cases of MCC. In general, clinical follow-up is at three months interval. And uh, in high-risk cases, where the risk of local re recurrence and regional node metastasis, the first two years after removal of primary tumor, the follow-up should be undertaken. However, high-risk patients with uh, even six-week follow-up is considered. At every second visit, beside clinical examination, including lymph node palpation, imaging of regional lymph node station should be performed. Once a year, upper abdominal ultrasound and chest radiograph or uh, sectional imaging studies may be considered. The follow-up period is generally restricted to five years, given that majority of recurrences occur during this time. So, in the end, I would like to revise the treatment or management option. The primary or the main option of treatment is surgical excision of primary tumor with at least two centimeter margin. Two centimeter, why? Because there are chances of microsatellite metastasis and uh, chances of recurrence. That's why a larger margin of excision should be done. This tumor is uh, quite radiosensitive. So in uh, all such cases, radiotherapy is combined with surgery, especially if primary tumor cannot be removed and when there is uh, regional spread to the local lymph nodes. So it is safe to eradicate 3 cm around the scar of the removal of primary tumor as well as the regional lymph node station. The dose is generally more than 50 grays. Then, uh, as far as the chemotherapy is concerned, it is not a very useful tool in primary or local regional disease. However, in stage 4, where the disease has metastasized, chemotherapy is a good option. It will be a palliative chemotherapy, not a, uh, not a treatment sort of chemotherapy. And uh, several chemotherapeutic agents are used like anthracycline, antimetabolites, texane, bleomycin, cyclophosphamide, etoposide, and platinum derivatives, either given as 3, 2, or monotherapy. 
For distant metastasis, irradiation is part of the multimodal approach. And follow-up is, is usually for five years, in which uh, first six weekly follow-up, patient should be clinically examined, and after every two months, ultrasound of abdomen and chest X-ray should be performed, and whenever required, CT scan. So I thank you all for a patient listening and see you next time with another edition of my talk. Thank you, goodbye, and have a good day.